Welcome back to Switch to Linux. Today we're going to be doing a little tutorial on how you can set up LibreOffice for better compatibility with Microsoft Office. Now to be sure, LibreOffice isn't the problem. The fact is, is that Microsoft Office does not want to work with the open office formats that work with all of the other platforms. And so while they actually generally render just fine, it gives you a lot of scare errors and things like be careful who sent you this and all this kind of stuff. It's literally Microsoft trying to keep their product the number one place to go to. Um, and frankly, Microsoft Office, particularly I use Word a lot. Um, I use LibreOffice Writer a lot, but I also have to interface with some things with Word. It is a very good Office application. And if it wasn't for Microsoft's data collection attempts, if it wasn't for their proprietary software and their anti-competitive nature, I might be more open and amicable to using it. Especially since they're pushing more and more and more to have a subscription service to it rather than simply outright buying it. And the reality reality is in this world where income is getting smaller and smaller, we have to be tighter and tighter with money. We don't have the money to throw out a hundred bucks a month for Adobe products, 10 bucks a month for office products, all to do basic functionality. Why bother when there's something like LibreOffice that exists? I'm an author and I write and produce my books on LibreOffice and they get accepted by the publisher, period. Well, I'm the publisher. They get accepted by the printer. Um, all that can be done with LibreOffice, and it's not a ton of extra steps. There are some extra steps in some areas, um, and I'm working on some other videos about uh, other more advanced ways of using LibreOffice. But for now, what we're going to do is we're going to talk about how you can get your system set up. So we're going to be bouncing between two machines. Uh, I've installed a uh, fresh copy of Linux Mint on one computer and we're going to be going over there and uh, having a look at um, the steps that we need to do. So briefly, number one biggest problem is that LibreOffice default format, file format, is the open office document uh, format. Uh, I think it's ODT, open document type, which causes a hissy fit if you attempt to open a Microsoft Office, um, uh, open a document of that format in Microsoft Office. So one simple step, we're just going to change the default to docx. If you generally are not necessarily needing that, it's very simple to just keep it how it is. And then if you need to send something to, to a person who only uses Microsoft Office, just save as a docx file, okay? Um, and so that's kind of what, what you need to do. Uh, this next thing though is that the fonts, oftentimes the fonts that are installed on a Linux system are different than the fonts that are installed on a Microsoft or a Windows system. And so a lot of the incompatibilities are actually font incompatibilities. So we're gonna walk through how to install fonts on your system and then how to change your default fonts uh, and things like that. So let's jump on over to Linux Mint. Uh, this is the one that we're gonna be using. Now I threw a document here which has uh, the packages we're gonna need to install. I have a uh, folder here with some fonts uh, that are not inside the packages we're going to install. So these we are going to install uh, with your, um, just with your ability to um, in manually installing fonts. And then we're gonna be running a script to install the clear type fonts and we're gonna be running a, another script or, or a, a Linux application to install the regular ones. So uh, the first thing you want is, you can do this through Synaptic. Uh, the first one you can do through Synaptic, you can do it through, I don't know if you can do it in the software center. Let's go ahead and check. What we're looking for is the package that is called um, True Type Fonts. Now, the difference here is that um, so right here is the one we want, TTF MS Core Font Installer, which you can run in the terminal, you can run anywhere else. This installs all of the old fonts before Windows Vista that were common on a uh, Windows computer. So it will install uh, the Arial, Comic Sans, Lord Help Us, um, Times New Roman, Verdana, Webdings, things like that. Now, this is a... Uh, these fonts were actually considered kind of open and out in the community. The clear type fonts is a little bit more of an interesting thing. The reason there's no installer package for those core type fonts is that they were never actually released to the, um, they were never really released to the community like the, the 
um, MS core fonts were. So we can't have a package for it. However, they are freely distributed. And so, uh, sure, we were going to sign over our child to Microsoft by accepting the EULA. It's one of those horrible things you need to do. Um, and uh, they never released them as open like they did with the MS core fonts but they have released them freely available. So we can still legally install them in pretty much every jurisdiction. Check your own jurisdiction to be sure for yourself. Uh, but nearly every jurisdiction you can do that. Uh, so what we're going to do, okay, that's done now. Um, uh, we are going to install a script that is going to, um, that is going to install those. Now to do that, we have to install a font folder. Linux Mint does something a little bit unusual in the uh, in the world. So um, when you install a font manually in Linux Mint, it puts it into a different location uh, than most distros do. And I'm forgetting exactly where it is. I think I can find it and we'll look for it. So these are t uh, two font families that you find, uh, the ones on the right, uh, that you find in Windows that are not in either the clear type fonts or the core fonts. Uh, these are, is it Sigoa, I think is the name of the one, and Tahoma. So if you double click on a font on Linux Mint, you can click the install button. And that's going to install it into your system. So you see it says installed now. So if we come over to the window on the left, I'm going to hold control and hit H to show hidden files. Most Linux distros um, and Linux Mint, it will work. It just doesn't do it by default. If you create a folder, it's called dot fonts any of those fonts will be installed on that particular Linux user's device. If you go into the file system, and I forget exactly which directory it is, you can install fonts for the entire system. I want to say it's in local share fonts. This is where they're installed now on Linux Mint, local share fonts. Um, we actually want, though, to use the font directory. So we're going to create a new folder. Now, of course, in Linux, the dot gives you a, a hidden folder. We're going to do dot fonts. And uh, the reason we're going to do this is that the script that we need to run, it's going to download those to the fonts. But the script does not actually have a line that checks if this directory is made. So if that dot fonts directory is not created, um, then it will actually error out. So what we're going to do is this is a script that's going to install the Vista fonts, which are also known as the clear fonts. So I'm going to pull up a terminal holding control alt and T will bring up a Linux terminal control shift and V will paste that in. And this should work. That's uh, because it's not updated yet. We're going to have to skip the Calibri font. Um, uh, looks like Microsoft killed it, killed the ability. <laughs> All right, well, let's just go ahead and uh, exit out of our terminal. We'll just go ahead and manually install the rest of these fonts over here. So at least we'll have this family. So we would need to get Calibri. Um, we can grab that from a Windows machine um, that will already have that. You can download from, from other sources or uh, working with the scripts. It's very possible it could just be an issue. This is uh, based on Ubuntu 18, whatever. So. Let's go ahead and now move on to our next uh, our next step. So our next step is we're going to boot up our LibreOffice again. And now what we want to do is we want to come in and under our tools and under our options, we need to change a couple of options. Um, you want to first look at your uh, load and save option and hit general. Uh, so this one down here is going to at the always save as. This is the one that uh, it wants to default save as the open document type. What you want to do is change this to docx, uh, Microsoft Word 2007 to 2013 docx file. So changing to that, anytime you now save a document, it's going to uh, automatically save it as a docx file. All right. So next, we're going to go back into our options and go under our writer.
and basic fonts. Now we're going to do Western here. Some parts of the world you might want to do the Asian. Now you're going to change your default. So here's your default font, heading, list, caption, and index. Now we're just going to change these to something that will exist on the Windows machine. So you could do Arial. Since I don't have Calibri, Arial is close to that, and that will be installed on any Linux or excuse me, on any Windows uh, machine running Office. So now we're just going to use Arial for everything. Now we are going to close down our application. We're going to not save it. Open Libre Writer back up. We should now have a default of Arial. This is just a test. I'm going to save the document. Let's just go ahead and save that onto the desktop as Untitled 2. And then what you see here is it saves as a docx file. Now in theory, I actually threw a uh, Microsoft account on the online accounts here so I can move this file over. But So mail and documents. In theory, I should be able to access that, but it's not showing up where I want it to show up. I should actually see that down here. Let's see. Okay, so I've logged into my OneDrive account. We're just still doing this on Linux Mint here. Um, so I've went into my um, Microsoft account, logged in here, went over to OneDrive, and then what I did is I took the same document, and you can see here's the LibreOffice with the docx file, and then I also saved it as a .odt. So it's the same file. So you can see LibreOffice doesn't care about either one. It's just fine either way. So I uploaded those both into my OneDrive account. And of course, if I click on the doc file, this will open up the doc file and it has no problems at all. It, um, it should see the font, which is Arial. So we do have the Arial font in there. Um, it has no problems at all. It seems to work just fine. Okay, but if I take the ODT file and open that up, you'll see that it does just fine, but then the JavaScript catches up and is like, oh Lord, we have an ODT file. Look at that scary warning. Same type of thing. You know, there is no reason Microsoft Office can't figure out how to do this. They just don't want to. Um, so hopefully this helped you figure it out. Um, again, I use the Arial font here because the um, I edited the part out, but the uh, the Calibri font, something changed somewhere in the script, and the scripts I had aren't working anymore. So what I'd want to do to get the Calibri fonts and the other fonts you might need is just manually transfer them over like we did the Tahoma font. Um, and so with this, um, it works just fine. Um, LibreOffice doesn't care, but if you just make those adjustments, just changing your fonts to fonts that will be found on a Windows machine and change your file type, uh, default file type to docx and use docx files inside LibreOffice and you send those out to uh, people who are running Microsoft Office, you shouldn't see any issues or any problems. So hopefully that helps you get things more compatible and uh, let me know if that was beneficial to you. So thanks for watching this video. Let me know other things you'd like to know in LibreOffice in the comments down below and I will roll out those videos as I get great ideas. Uh, you can actually help support the channel if you want to. Check out switchtolinux.com forward slash support. I am on Patreon, patreon.com forward slash Tom M. And don't forget to uh, swing by the merchant shop at shop.switchtolinux.com. So thanks for watching and hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.